Good morning, everyone. It's 2022. Another year. Wow. I seem like I say this every year, and we probably all do. But we're going into our second year or third year, whatever second year of this pandemic. And, you know, I prayed and prayed and I said, oh, 2022 is going to be a better year. You know what it is? It is, even though it's going out with a bang and starting with a bang with so many virus counts higher than even before. There are not as many people in the hospital and not as many people dying. So there is progress. I entitled my candlelighting service last week with Unlocking the Mysteries. So what's next? So this week it's what's next? What's next for us? It doesn't seem like this pandemic is going away, and truthfully, it won't. It's it's a virus, but it will get to a point like flu that we will be able to go about our daily lives um, without fear as much as we have in the last two years. I know we're all tired of it, and we just wanted to just go away and get to our next new normal. So that's what I'm going to base my talks about this year on unlocking the mysteries of this year. What does God have in store for each and every one of us? And the message will be about survival, some tools for survival, what we can do to help us get through so through all that is going on in our lives because many of us have lost family members either through the pandemic or through other things that have happened in this world and how are we getting through you how are we using the tools that i gave you last week the 12 last year with the 12 powers and with the um kind um was it candlelight and service those 12 powers we're going to talk about those spiritual survival tools to get us through this year so what's next what are we going to do to keep positive happy and and willing to keep moving forward in the midst of what's going on in our world. It's a mystery. It's an unknown because our world is constantly changing. However, one thing I do know for sure. That God is unchanging. His love is everlasting no matter the circumstances or whatever is going on. And that is the basis, like we say, the first commandment. Put God first. That's where we're starting. And that's why I decided with my what's next today, it's about giving thanks. We have to start with giving thanks. We got this far. And we will continue to keep going further. But we have to give thanks. So let's pray. Ah, take a deep breath in. And go deeper into that consciousness, into that center of your being. And give thanks to God. Mm, settle into the silence of the presence of God. Your source. Your everything. And while we breathe in, we feel the waves of peace flowing through our bodies and our minds as we become still and know the truth of who we are as children of God. We feel peaceful and thankful and grateful. And in that and in this energy, we send healing prayers out into our world, continual healing prayers. With the collective energy of all of us, we heal our world from sickness, from violence, from destructions, from sadness. And through our healing light, we lift up our friends, our families, our co-workers. We lift up the doctors and nurses who are exhausted and care keepers givers throughout this pandemic we know by our prayers and sending out our healing light we heal our world and we say thank you God for that power and for that strength 
to move from suffering and sadness to joy, love, and peace. We count our blessings one by one as we see the evidence of God's goodness in so many areas of our world and our lives, even with what's going on, we say, thank you, God. He bless those in the midst of heavy um, storms and winds along the East Coast. The fighting in um, Afghanistan, I, I'm probably saying it wrong. Bless them there in Russia and Russia and all the areas of the world in need of prayer. Bless Bermuda and the families who've lost the young man during our Christmas holiday. Bless our island with so many people with COVID just as in the rest of the world. As we heal and move forward, we give thanks for this day because we know tomorrow will bring new blessings and new occasions to give thanks. So we breathe in oh, the power and the might and the glory of God within us. And give thanks for all things. And there is no limit to our thanks. Even as God gives to us generously, we give our generosity to all others by our prayers, by our actions, by our words and by our thoughts. The spirit of thanksgiving is lifted up and expressed through each and every one of us. As we say, thank you, God, for with faith, hope, peace, joy, and love, we will move through all barriers in our lives with thanksgiving in our hearts and joy spreading from our souls. So we say amen, amen. Thank you, God. Ah, so solidify this prayer. I'm going to play the song, Thank You, God, for Everything by Eddie Watkins. God. 
always say that if you say no other prayer but thank you, you've said enough. Now that's why I love that song, because basically all it said was thank you. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So what's next? What's next? God keeps throwing different things at us, and the more we learn, the more we grow. And So what's next? What does 2022 hold for us? The burning bowl service, I did say candle lighting service, but the burning bowl service talked about unlocking the mysteries. Well, we're going to prepare ourselves for those mysteries, as I said, to give ourselves tools to get through 2022, because I know it's going to be a great year. Expressing gratitude and through praise and thanksgiving can start in any area of your life and bring immediate results. You know, I listened to that song and I just felt a peace that passes all of us understanding go through me just by those words. Thank you, God, for everything. Brings immediate results. So one of the tools I'm going to start with today is using some affirmations that we can use. And I'm always throwing them out there and we use them a lot in unity. And just through your life, just say an affirmation to get you to the next stage and the next step and the next step as we move through a world that has drastically changed. Affirmations are so great because um, they become established in our consciousness and bring a greater understanding of who God is within us when we affirm something wonderful and, and we make it something that stays with us and holds us and guides us. So it broadens our understanding of who God is for each and every one of us. And that's what we have to learn for ourselves. I'm just here as a tool to guide you and to help you to deepen your understanding of God. And by affirming the truth of what God is in you, you are lifted up from any false thoughts or negative thinking into a consciousness of spirit where you say thank you and you feel that joy. So that's what's next. That's what's next. And that's what's going to carry us through this year. So the first affirmation I'm going to share with you and we're going to say together. I'll say it first. I praise and give thanks for God's image in me. Let's say that together. I praise and give thanks for God's image in me. So why did I start with that one? It's because we are all in the likeness and the image of God. We are children of God. So we have the power to Hold on and keep moving forward and giving thanks every long way for the smallest things. When the day feels the darkest, we can give thanks that we woke up. I'm always saying start small. You open your eyes. So affirm again, I praise and give thanks for God's image in me. That's where we're starting. We put God first. Hold on to this truth. I was reading yesterday's daily word and it was about strength. And last year we started the month on with the power of strength. I think that's what it, no, it was faith. But anyway, we're talking about strength. And one of the sections said, when I feel overwhelmed by that which I am called to face, I remember that the strength of God within me equips me to overcome adversity and thrive. I'm going to say that again. When I feel overwhelmed by that which I am called to face, like this pandemic, I remember that the strength of God within me equips me to overcome adversity and thrive. Isn't that wonderful? This is that strength of God, the image of God within you, that it's a part of you, that you are, ye are God's. You have that power. So repeat that affirmation as much as you want, as many times as you can, to get the energy of it to flow through you and lift you up. 
and so that you begin to appreciate who you are and what you are to get to the next what if and what's next. And so that what next is not what's next, but God, what's next in this world? That's where we want to be. Start with that first commandment. Put God first so that you give thanks for God's image in you. The next affirmation I'm going to give you in this these tools for you is I praise and give thanks for God's image in you. Because, you know, once we've grasped it for ourselves, now we need to spread it out in the world. We need everybody to join in a collective energy of giving thanks to help us all to get through to that next what's what's next. And what's, what are we to do to survive and keep going? So let's say together, I praise and give thanks for God's image in you. So it's all of us. The greatest help we can give to one another is to recognize gratefully God's identity in each and every one of us. And by performing these exercises and these affirmations, we are silently and sincerely changing our lives and our fellow humans on this world's lives for the better. Believe it. It is true. I started with by telling you, by giving thanks, you get immediate results. Jesus said, we are the light of the world. So by grasping on to that truth of um, giving thanks for the image of God in yourself and in other people, you are spreading the light of God. Where Jesus says, we are the light of the world. So the next affirmation we're going to say, I praise and give thanks for the light of the world that I am and for my expanding ability to let this light shine. I'm going to say it again. I praise and give thanks for the light of the world that I am and for my expanding ability to let this light shine. Isn't that wonderful? By holding on this truth, when you give thanks, you lift up your soul and other people's souls. And it eradicates the darkness in, in minds, hearts, and body, and all affairs. And it fills the whole world with light. Believe this to be true. Just say thank you. With feeling, with energy. The Apostle Paul told us that after we discover our true identity, who we are in God, we stop letting ourselves be pushed around by the world of appearances, by all those outer circumstances, by all the things we hear in the news, by this pandemic, and all the negative things. We stop getting pushed around by those things because we know who we are in God. And we become a life-giving spirit. We are lifted up into the light because we know who we are. And those outer circumstances aren't ours to push us down, but to teach us and lift us up. As dark as it may seem out there, we have the inner strength to move through this. So we're going to affirm, I praise and give thanks for the power to stimulate my mind, heart, body, work, relationships with other people and my world with refreshing life current I distribute. I know this one is a bit long. If I can remember, I'll put it in the email when I send it out. But I'm going to say it again. I praise and give thanks for the power to stimulate my mind, heart, body, work, relationships with other people and my whole world with a refreshing life current I distribute. That's what we want to do. We want to give thanks and spread it out into the world. Giving thanks and lighten up our own selves and into the world. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do I need to say anything else? Do I really need to say anything else? Having that attitude of gratitude in our lives 
gives us the power to keep moving forward. What's next? Greater possibilities. What's next? Prosperity and abundance and wonderful things happening in our lives. What's next? Anything's possible and it's all good. And when we do that, your gratitude is magnetic. It brings to you all that you desire. A grateful heart and mind becomes a mighty magnet drawing to you all those things. And what do you say when you receive them? Thank you, God. That's what it is. Some other tools we can do outside of um, affirmations. It's possibly doing a gratitude journal where we list um, things we're grateful for. We can try from one to ten things each day. Sometimes you get stuck or you feel like, oh, I said that yesterday. Doesn't matter. Say it over and over and over. Gratitude. You can never be um, more grateful or be grateful for something over and over again. Being grateful for being alive. You can say that every moment. And it's wonderful. That's one of the tools you can do. Or as we say all the time, regular prayer is another practice. And that allows us to keep moving forward and grow more spiritually. And it rises or raises our gratitude quotum when we um, pray and develop this attitude or this attitude of gratitude. The higher gratitude, quote him, the more magnetized you become to receive all the gifts of health, happiness, joy, peace, love, and prosperity that we desire in our lives. And when we do this, we are more compassionate to other people and ourselves in all circumstances, as First Thessalonians says. So that when you come up against someone who doesn't agree with you or you have a difference of opinion, there's no anger. You can walk away, forgive yourself of any thoughts you might have had of them, and say, thank you, God, for the gift of standing strong in my strength and my love For knowing that with God you can move through anything and still have a smile on your face. An attitude of gratitude, you know, for many of us takes time to develop. So practice every day. Use some of these tools, affirmations, prayers, journaling, walking, whatever. Mine is walking. Anybody knows me, I'm a walker. And I've said it many times. Soon as I start walking, I start praying. And sometimes I have to snap out of it and know where I am because I'm in the midst of for prayer. I see birds. I see, feel the breeze blowing. All those things bring me to that place of gratitude. And I give thanks. And a smile comes to my face because I saw a red bird or I saw a crane or anything that I saw or a new flower growing. I give thanks. So as I'm doing that, I'm developing a stronger attitude of gratitude so that I can smile more and be thankful more and pray. Another way, and I always think it's fun to think about gratitude and giving thanks, is when we get a meal and there are still many people out there struggling to get food and in snowy weather and bad weather out there. Um, services have a hard time getting to people and helping others and I always remember um, saying grace and I must admit I don't always remember to say grace when I'm sitting at my table but I'm always thankful for what I receive and I'm always saying prayers anyway so I always say I've already blessed it but I know I want to get back to starting to remember to say my grace before I eat my food every time but anyway I digress Remember when you, um, your mom, when you were growing up, told you better eat all those food because kids in Africa don't have all of this or somewhere else doesn't have it. And you're looking at their food and going, yuck. With my grandmother, it was, you better eat that food. And one of the worst things she made was cuckoo. I'm not even going to try to explain what that is. It was nasty. Let's put it that way. 
But we still had to say our grace and say thank you, God, for our food. And she would tell us to eat it all um, and be thankful. And I'm sitting there going, I know I got to be thankful for this nasty food. But you know, you are, I was thankful. Because we didn't have it every day. And I always had food to eat. I had lunch and I had breakfast so I wasn't starving. So if I didn't eat that dinner, I knew how to hide it and get rid of it quickly. I was, I was good at it too. I could say thank you for all the meals that I have received. Past, present and future. So I thank you God for convincing me to say my grace and give thanks for all the food. And it did nourish my body. And now I've probably eaten too much over the holiday and need to get rid of some of it. But I say thank you and I give thanks. And one of the ways in which, especially as children and even as adults, because I know my husband loves a dessert, we get to look forward to dessert or that's something sweet after we've eaten our meal. And sometimes we have to eat stuff we don't really want to eat just to get to the good stuff. And on for us on Sundays, Grandpa always brought home pies. And it was either lemon pie or apple pie, my two favorites. And so the best part about Sundays, I always liked Sunday meals. So I ate all my food to get my um, pie, whatever one we had. And through the week, and if I didn't eat it, it was okay. I still got my pie on the Sundays. So we get rewarded. And just like that pie, God rewards us when we give thanks for even the simplest or smallest thing. And this is just a simple way of understanding how giving thanks in every part of our life helps us to bring good in our lives. So continue to say prayers or statements of gratitude. Give thanks for even the smallest things in your life. For gratitude, allow gratitude to fill your mind and your heart. Praying with gratitude expands your consciousness towards greater blessings. Remember God is love and we live in that love. For to receive all that God's love, we give thanks. We give thanks. So what's next? Gratitude. Giving thanks. Start with that in 2022 and every day wake up giving thanks and we'll know what's next. Good no matter the other circumstances. For all that's out there will pass. I don't know when it ends. It's all in divine order. But just remember to pray, give thanks, express heartfelt gratitude all the time, and you will receive the best of the best. So take a deep breath in and I thank you for listening to me as we go into our meditation. I'm going to read the daily word for today. So take a deep breath in and out. In and out. The affirmation for today is Divine Wisdom helps me discover my unique spiritual path. Tending to my spiritual life keeps me attentive to the whispers of my heart and in tune with my guidance. I am grateful for those moments I can rely upon my spiritual intuition to discern my path forward. 
but sometimes my guidance feels far away and hard for me to access on my own. At those times, I may seek the assistance of my trusted friends and advisors. I may seek the wise counsel of my minister or a spiritual counselor who encourages me to discover the wisdom found in the depths of my own consciousness. She, he, or they pray with me, listen with empathy, and share my joy as my innate wisdom leads me along my unique spiritual path. I am grateful for those who walk the path alongside me. John 14, 28 says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. So take a deep breath in and out. In and out. So as we open our eyes and come back to this place in time, we affirm in giving thanks for every evidence of God's goodness, I find more and more for which to be thankful. I'll say that again. In giving thanks for every evidence of God's goodness, I find more and more for which to be thankful. So we close in prayer. Let the light of God surround you. The love of God enfold you. The power of God protect you. The presence of God watch over you. For wherever you are, God is and you are richly blessed. Amen. Amen. So I look forward to sharing with you again next week as we talk about I will survive. So namaste, until next time.